Joseph and Jesus compared. Watch this. You're going to see it right now. So he had a miraculous birth, right? Remember, Rachel was barren and suddenly she was able to have a child and she was just filled with joy. And she was also Israel's most favored bride. This is most favored woman, right? <laughs> Just like Mary. He was the father's most favored son. In fact, that's why his brothers hated him so much because they were envious. They were jealous of how much the father loved Joseph more than any other. And what happened? He was despised and rejected by his own. His brothers could not stand him. They hated him. He was sent out of Hebron by by his father to go check on his brothers, right? Remember, Hebron means alliance or fellowship. Jesus was sent out of fellowship with the father in heaven to come down and become a human just like us. Isn't that amazing? He humbled himself. His own conspired to murder him. Remember, his brothers saw him from far away. And even before he came near, his brothers conspired to murder him. We see the same picture with Jesus. Amazing. He was sold for pieces of silver. Jesus was sold for pieces of silver. In fact, both of them were the price of a slave. 20 pieces of silver was a price of a slave in Joseph's time. 30 pieces of silver was the price of a slave in Jesus' time. He was handed over to the Gentiles. We know that happened with Jesus as well, right? He was falsely accused. Remember that woman accused him of rape and it was a lie. And he was sent down to the place of the condemned and tells the fate of the two prisoners that were condemned with him. Remember the baker was cursed and he died, but the but the cupbearer, he was restored to the king to go back to the palace to work with the king and to serve the king again. And he had life. He was given life. And Joseph said it would happen in three days. Amazing. It shows a picture of the cross. The two that were crucified with Jesus. One lives and the other was cursed to death. Wow, this is amazing. He was raised up. Then Joseph was raised up out of that place of judgment, that dungeon, that place of the pit, and he was brought before the throne. Wow, what a picture of Jesus. So amazing. We see that in Revelation 5, right? He was the only one found worthy to reveal the sealed plan of God. Remember, the Pharaoh had the dreams and nobody can interpret it. No one in all of the land, no wise men, no one. But it was one man, Joseph, who was found worthy to reveal the God's future plan, his secret plan, so to speak. And it was, he was able to reveal it because it was God who did it. And it's just like with Jesus. He was the only one found worthy in Revelation 5 to take the scroll out of the right hand of he who sat on the throne. Amazing stuff, is it not? And then what happened? He who sat on the throne proclaimed that every knee had to bow to him except for he who sat on on the throne. Every knee must bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We see that same picture in Joseph's story. He was given a Gentile bride. Remember his bride, Asenath? She was a Gentile and, and Joseph takes her in and becomes uh, her husband. And, and she, the bride, like the bride of Christ is mostly Gentile today, but this is going to change guys. Watch this. And he gathered a great harvest before the seven year time of famine or the seven years of Jacob's trouble, right? It was the, the time of Jacob's trouble. He sent his, his sons down to go get grain. It was in Egypt because of this famine that was over the whole face of the earth. It was all over the land, the whole face, the Bible says of the earth. And it was seven years. Imagine that seven years, just like the great tribulation period. And two years into that, what happens? Israel goes to get grain. And then they finally discover that Joseph is alive. He's alive. He reveals that he's alive to them. After all these years, they thought he was dead. He, they threw him under the bus many, many years ago, but now he's alive and they were scared. But he says, don't be afraid. Come closer. I am Joseph. Ani Yosef in Hebrew. I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold down to Egypt. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. And he forgave them and he showed them great mercy 
mercy and grace, just like we see in Zechariah 12, right? So during the seven-year time of trouble, which was over all the face of the earth, his brothers come back to him, bowed down, just like for the fulfillment of his dreams. He then revealed to them that he was alive. Jesus is alive today, you guys. And he forgives them and he shows grace to them. Grace means getting something good that you don't deserve. He forgives them and he shows them amazing grace. Wow, so good. They wept together. That's like Zechariah 12. Remember, we see that. You could read that prophecy and that each of the tribes of Israel, each of those 12 tribes, together weep with this Messiah that they see who was pierced. They will look on him whom they pierced and they will weep as one weeps for a firstborn. Well, that speaks of Jesus. And here we're seeing the same thing in Joseph. He wept with each one of those brothers who were what? The 12 tribes of Israel. Amazing stuff. He explains to them that he was fulfilling God's plan to save Gentiles and to save Israel, Joseph said, that many people would be alive. Remember that? He unites his new family to his old as one, one Israel, and they will be together forever and ever. And he gives them the best of the land the best of the land. Does that not speak of Jesus? Who was described here, Joseph or Jesus? I would say both. And that's because God made Joseph's life a picture and a portrait, a tapestry, telling a story about this this future Messiah. And it would happen, Joseph was 2,000 years before Jesus. And you're seeing the same story played out. Why did God do that? Because he wanted us to see his son, Messiah, the son of Joseph, who was uh, talked about by many of the old sages and, and scribes of ancient, ancient Israel. They were expecting two messiahs. One would be the suffering servant. The other one would be the king. Well, they got one messiah, but two comings, the first coming and the second coming. And Joseph's story shows us that picture. In fact, he shows us the picture all the way through to the end. Isn't that amazing? I love that. I love how God did that. He gave us all of that. So I'm writing a new book right now. It's almost done. You can pre-order it on Amazon or you can wait till it comes out. I'm going to keep the price really low. You can get paperback, hardback, hardcover, or you can watch it uh, on Kindle, the e-version if you'd like. But hey, if you want to see more videos like this, Click this playlist right here, How to Find Jesus in the Old Testament, and you will see all of them, and you will be blessed by it. So click this playlist right here, and don't forget to subscribe as well. Love you guys.